Hello and welcome to my channel Green Line Goddess Tarot. Today we're going to talk about the new moon in Aquarius and I just got guided to talk about this because sometimes when I look at the charts it's a sense of suddenly this intuitive sense of a story starts coming out and I wanted you to see this as a story and um, yeah it is an intuitive interpretation of the chart that is coming through. But um, just wanted to also let you know that this chart that I've got pulled up on the screen at this moment is set for Sydney, Australia. So it's really just not relevant. Uh, the houses, particular houses, the MC, the AC is not relevant. The Ascendant and the MC are not relevant unless you are in Sydney or the East Coast of Australia or you're in Aquarius rising. So, but for all the rest of you, it still is the planetary placements of the chart. It's just a, the astro astrological houses will shift and change. So, for those of you who live in Sydney, <laughs> this is a triple Aquarius. You know, we've got Aquarius ascendant, we've got the new moon. So it's all happening here. But really, I wanted to talk about the energies because we have the sun and the moon conjunct at one degree of Aquarius. So it's very much at the beginning of the cycle for Aquarius, but it's conjunct Pluto, the planet of intensity, of power, of the areas of life that you want to remain in control of truth. So it's uh, the power, the planet of transformation, the lord of the underworld, Pluto. So this is potentially going to be a very, very intense new moon. So new moons is the dark moon. It's all about letting go of the old and setting the making way for the new and setting new intentions for the new, new seeds that are being planted in this very fertile dark space of the new moon. So yes, very intense, <laughs> I would say with Pluto there and Pluto's coming in saying, you know, some of these seeds have been here for a long time. I'm going to show you some truths in this new moon. So that's going to, and connect you to the power, connect you to a powerful sense of truth or a part of your life that you're trying to stay in control. So really when I'm tuning into this moon, I get this very interesting push-pull energy because yes, the sun and moon are at the same degree, but the moon is out of bounds. It doesn't play by the rules of the sun. <laughs> It is just, it makes its own rules. There's a wildness to this moon, to the spirit of this moon. And so it almost wants to go way into the future and be starting to feeling and, uh, you know, it's a, a sense of, so even though they're together, it's almost like you've invited your friend to the party, but your friend is there in the same space as you, but it's kind of like you can't control this friend. It's like this uh, very interesting, <laughs> progressive, rebellious, even radical kind of friend has turned up. So these are the feelings when we're talking about the moon. You might be um, getting these real sense of I really want to be free and going off and doing this and this sense of a future vision might come through. But then we've got the sun conjunct Pluto, which is there's something that is within you that wants to remain very controlled, uh, that's connecting you to your power. So it, this is where I'm getting this sense of the push-pull that there's, and it, you might feel it external in your life, you know, I'm here at this point in time, in this place, I need to remain in control, yet I've got these feelings that are just feeling like, you know, that they, they feel a little bit wild, really. So it, it's like this can be, the moon out of bounds can be brilliant energy as well, genius. It might be very highly creative as well. So especially as it's it's uh, try sextiling Neptune in there as well, but it just has this sense of I need to stay in control, but yet there's something that's calling me into this other free spirited energy that wants to pull me out of this, and so it's this real sense of push pull. And so the way this could uh, play out in your life is maybe you're living somewhere, but it, you're kind of sick of the traveling, and you you want more of a greater sense of freedom. Perhaps you want to move somewhere else, but then at the same time, there's something that's keeping you in your original place. You know, I'm here because I'm in a relationship with somebody. So there's something that's kind of keeping you there. So it's kind of an interesting energy. And these are the new seeds that are being planted, um, which is interesting. And we have uh, Venus conjunct Saturn. <laughs> uh, yes, in a square to Uranus retrograde and the North Node. So I get with this energy in particular, as this is where 
part of this message that this beautiful out of bounds moon has for you is that there's something calling you for the future, something that you really want for the future, this free idea of freedom, freedom and wildness of spirit to listen to. And you might be getting these messages that, you know, it's time for a change. There's a fated change that's coming in or even returning this sense of something coming back to you that can come through with this as well. But it's not the right time. <laughs> there might be, uh, so it's like, I really want to be doing this. I get a sense of this is my destiny or I really need to go along this path. There's a soul growth lesson for me. You know, I'm moving towards this energy, but why? what's this slowness and restriction and delays? You know, it just feels like it's not the right time. So that can be this sense of frustration because again it's this push pull energy that's coming in that's just the general feeling i'm getting with this new moon a real push pull energy and then but you know we have jupiter uh sextiling the the sun and the moon and pluto as well as well as sextiling mars and we'll talk about mars in a, in a moment so it's like something wants to expand in your life you're potentially getting really motivated getting the feeling that this needs to this needs to expand and grow and something perhaps could take off like a wildfire there's all this wild energy around it but yet it's a sense of there's still going to be some time constraints or, you know, there's still these restrictions around it. So again, it's that that kind of energy is coming through. Uh, so yeah, Mars is also out of bounds and has been for a while. So Mars is no longer retrograde, which is really great, but it is trining the new moon energy, which is again, this sense of it doesn't, it's like the friend at the party that is like, I can help you make something happen, but I'm not necessarily going to do it the way that you want me to do it or follow your rules. But um, I'm, um, so there's kind of this sense and with the Gemini energy, Mars in Gemini, it's like you might be finding yourself pulled in two different directions or that you're starting two things or you've got two things on the go here. So it really is, it's like with these um, energies of the out of bounds planets of the moon and and Mars, and they're both sextiling each other. I mean, sorry, trining each other as well. It's like, whoo, this sense of you might just be feeling really spontaneous. It's kind of like a wild, crazy energy of this is what I want to do. This is kind of when people start having ideas of I want to move and live in a totally different country. I want to change jobs or you know, there's these ideas that are just kind of coming or motivations that are float and feelings that are floating around you for quite a, potentially quite a radical change and doing things uh, that uh, might seem a little bit uh, outside the norm for you or rebellious or, you know, um, radical of any sort. So it's interesting because I feel like there's this sense of yeah, it, it's almost like you might not necessarily want to tell some people about some of the motivations or things that you're doing at this moment in time. It might be that, yes, there are plans afoot for change, but it's not the right time or you kind of not feeling like a certain person is the right person to tell at this moment in time. So, yeah, it's it's a really interesting energy of some very exciting new seeds for the future being planted and feeling these are fated. Perhaps it's not quite the right time for the, if these seeds are related to love and money, um, which most of the seeds that we plant are, let's be honest. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's an interesting energy. I feel like there's... Uh, a really positive flow that can come through with it because there's this really nice sex styles and trines that are happening. Uh, but yeah, just very much a sense of if some of these things that you're trying to start, um, there's going to be, it doesn't mean that they're not right, but there's going to be a delay to them. Um, so, you know, it's like I can't get it off the ground now or it can't start for another couple of months or maybe it just doesn't feel like the right time. So that's something that's coming through. So the other thing that's coming through with this new moon is that there's also this interesting energy of uh, some truth versus illusion coming in. So it's almost like Neptune wants to say, oh, this is the illusion that we're living in and isn't this fabulous and wonderful? And then Pluto says, but this is the truth. 
And it's almost like, but I want to believe the illusion, but at the same time I'm being shown the truth. And it sort of takes you out of the illusion. And again, it's that sense of being taken out of two different realities and the push-pull energy. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. But this, if you are a creative person or very highly spiritual person, this could be connecting to some deep spiritual truths, even a sense of uh, transformation, which could be really beautiful. If you're very creative, this could be a transformation of your creative process, um, tapping into some very fertile seeds that have been there in the underworld. So yes, it, it can be really amazing as well. So overall, yes, this is a really great time to set some intentions. So what I'm going to do now is go through each of the 12 signs and just pull some cards, pull some tarot for, uh, you know, the intentions that are being set here. So we're going to start with Aquarius. <laughs> so all this energy, if you're Aquarius rising, is happening in your first house. So this is all setting intentions for you, your personal journey, your body. So let's see what's coming in. What card is coming through for Aquarius? Card for Aquarius. We'll see if, if one's going to jump. Oh, okay. We love it. The panther. Okay. The panther is coming through. I love this. Look at those green eyes of like, I've got my eye on something here and I'm not letting it go. So it's a fierceness that's coming through here in the darkness here with the panther, the dark, it's night and there's the, the dark moon. But again, it's that, <laughs> that moon out of bounds energy where you might be feeling a little bit like, uh, yes, very fierce or uh, protective, protective of an idea or protective of yourself or if someone's doing something that doesn't feel right to you. Interesting as well is that there's an energy that comes in around truth versus illusion. Um, so some truths and deceptions may be revealed to you. Uh, but uh, I get this sense of you kind of wanting to put a bit of a barrier around yourself here. There's You're protecting a space uh, because there is something here that um, you feel is very valuable that is this new intention that you're setting here, but you don't, or you kind of almost like you don't want other people's crap or toxic energy to be part of this. It's like I really need to uh, be putting a barrier around it. So Yes, I think that just creating some space for yourself could be really great if you are Aquarius or Aquarius rising. So let's move on to Pisces. So if you are Pisces rising, then this is all happening in your 12th house, which is the, the new moon energy is happening in your house of spiritual spiritual development, <laughs> spirituality, but it's also the house of endings. So there's, it's interesting, something new begins whilst you're allowing something to end. It's, it could be a very deep spiritual energy that comes in around that. Or you might even be doing, starting something behind the scenes or something that takes you out of the limelight for a little while, but you're kind of working on that. Um, so that's something that comes through. We've got as your message, the earthworm. Okay. This is again, the earthworm is the equivalent of the full card in the tarot. It's something very small. It's like, it's very 12th house energy you know it's it's very subconscious energy it's tilling the soil so the earthworm does the job of getting making it a fertile space something inside your world a very fertile space at this moment in time so that something new can come through and be activated in that very 12th house space of spirituality the subconscious things behind the scenes things that are hidden so this is a really perfect time to start going what do I need to do to be the earthworm it, it feels like something uh, small, like the earthworm is a small creature, but it does such an important job. Uh, and so it really is doing the work to create the space so that it's a fertile space to step into something new is really important with this earthworm energy and to not discount the small things because they're important. So that is your message, Pisces. Okay, so let's look at Aries, a message for Aries coming in. So Aries, this new moon energy is coming in in your 11th house. 
of hopes and dreams. So there could be some new hopes and dreams that are being seeded at this moment in time. There could be some new success that is being succeeded at this moment in time. With Jupiter in your sign as well, this could be an incredibly sec successful new seeds that are coming in for you, which is going to be really amazing. Like This could be a time of opportunity. Uh, so yes, exciting times. The 11th house is also related to groups, like how you're working with groups. So new things seeding with groups groups, friendships, social groups, audiences. So things like that could be coming through. Let's see, we have the snake. Hmm, interesting. I think that through this sense of, you know, one cycle ends, a new one begins, there's a karmic release with the snake. And it's a sense of you are being called in to use your gifts and abilities to a wider audience, to a larger group of people. So that is something that's really being called, you're being called into at this moment. And so I feel like you're being, you're really being connected to these gifts and abilities. Perhaps you already know about it, but it's a sense of a, a wider reach or more people. But I get the sense of sparkle and shine as well, Aries. So I get the sense of if you didn't know about this gift, then you do. You, but you are connecting to some kind of gift that you have that you can share. But if you already knew about it, it's like it's becoming brighter in the world. So it's got this brilliance to it, which is very beautiful. So the light of is shining and it's time. So that's a beautiful energy to come through for you, Aries. Okay, so moving forward into Taurus. And these cards already flipped out for you, Taurus. And I love the bear because the bear is a very Taurian energy for me. It's a, it's a big animal. It's an, this is, represents the earth. So the bear is this sense of looking out. The bear's been in the cage and it's come out of the cage, out of its hibernation. <laughs> and it's come out with these eyes of it's spring. There's new growth, seeing the world through the new uh, lens. And things are shifting and changing in your world at the moment. But what does the bear see? the phoenix, the phoenix rising, something rising from the ashes is reborn, is transformed. So there's this beautiful sense of seeing a transformation in your life and the new seeds, the new growth around that, which is really fantastic. So this feels like a very, very exciting energy for you, Taurus, coming through. So these are the seeds of the new seeds of the new growth that bring a transformation, which is really fantastic. And it feels like I like how it's got the, uh, it feels, it starts from a very grounded space. So this could even feel like a very personal, it's very, um, yeah, it, you, you're, it's going to affect you personally in some way, shape or form. So yeah, and Taurus, this energy, if you are a Taurus rising, this energy is going to be affecting you in the 10th house of career and public reputation. So there is a trans there's a sense of new growth, new seeds coming in, transformation when it comes to your career, to how people see you. And this can be, you know, related to your relationship status or if are you a parent or what sort of are you married or are you single? Or are you um, this or are you that? Are you head of something or are you seen as this sort of person in the world? Are you a creative artist? You know, however you're seen in the world, there's this sense of a personal transformation that's coming through. And that's why I love the, the bears come through. So, yes, very exciting, Taurus, I would say. So let's pull a card for Gemini. Okay, Gemini, my goodness. You have Mars out of bounds in your sign but it is now moving forward so that is a sense of um yeah that you might be just like I just want to be doing it all kind of thing I want to be doing so much uh we have as your energy here the frog Okay, so this is, it doesn't rain, it pours. So that's a sense of, yes, I want to do it all. Uh, it could be emotional overwhelm as well, perhaps sometimes. So just be careful not to burn out with this energy. But the new seeds, if you are Gemini rising, is occurring in your ninth house of meaning, in your ninth, ninth house of uh, higher education, travel, philosophy, religion, uh, teaching. So anything to do with the foreign uh, connections, foreign cultures. So I think ultimately it's, it's, um, 
I've, I, the only thing I, I'm kind of getting here is there's just so much you want to, it's like I want to be doing so much and it all means something. But then if you do too much, then it means nothing. And so it's just about balancing that energy. The frog is also about emotional replenishment. You know, the frog needs the rain to survive. So there's something that's coming in here that can activate these new seeds, can bring a sense of thriving, not just surviving, but it's a matter of focusing the energy <laughs> is kind of what I feel like not to get uh, too over it is a very excitable energy, like getting too overexcited by something or working too hard or, you know, you've got too many things on the go or your energy is invested in too many like different options or people here. Um, they're just, it's kind of a sense of um, trying to disentangle yourself or to simplify it a little bit is what's coming through. But yeah, the frog is a beautiful energy. The monsoon is coming. What it is that you need is coming, which is really lovely. Uh, but it's just about being more about being open to receive than feeling like you need to go out and do it to get to make it happen. So that's kind of a different energy. So yeah, that's that's your reading, Gemini. Okay, so let's see. We are moving to Cancer. Okay, Cancer. Cancer, let's see what has come in for you. We have Snake and Crocodile. Hmm, this snake energy is coming in quite a lot, actually. It's got this sense of the snake energy is the, where one cycle ends and you one begins. There is a karmic release and you are connected to some kind of gift or ability. Uh, there's something here that is like the gift of a reward from an old karma that's coming back here. And so if there's something's been like toxic or out of balance or something's or someone's hurt you, this has been a long time waiting with the crocodile. The crocodile waits patiently in between land and water. So it's almost like this something's kind of put you a little bit out of yourself in some way, shape or form. It's like you're not on land, you're not on water, you don't know where you are. Um, so it's kind of, you know, sometimes when yeah, it just it feels like there's something that just feels like it's been in an in-between space or just never really got fully resolved in some way, shape or form and, and pushed. Like I said, the only way I can describe this is that a part of your soul got, it feels like a part of you kind of just got pushed out of yourself. And so this might feel like that um, something is returning, there's some kind of karmic return here or some, uh, you might see if there's someone that has done something wrong to you or an old relationship or something, there's some kind of karma that comes in for that person. But you're getting the gifts and rewards of an old cycle, an old experience here that the karma is releasing and you're getting the, the you know, this is the... Yep, yeah, the good part. This is the reward at the end. So, and again, like I said, it connects you to your gifts, which is really lovely. So, or a gift of some sort. So very nice. Long time coming, but there's something coming here in terms of a karmic release. So, and if you are Cancer rising, this uh, new moon energy is all happening in your eighth house, which is your house of transformation. So this karmic connection to your gifts or karmic release that comes through here or karmic reward that comes in, I guess, is probably the best way that we could describe it. Could be very much to do with, a, could have a transformative effect on you with um, how you're working with other people's, like a, a transformative psychological effect as well. This could come through with this, but it can also uh, transform how you're dealing with other people's energies. So perhaps this is something that you've kind of carried around somebody else's energies or how you're just kind of take, dealing with other people's energies in general. This can relate to joint finances, debt, uh, <laughs> things like that, mortgages. So there's potentially something that could come in around that as well. But I feel like this is a positive energy. It's a positive new seed. So set the intention around that as well. So let's move on to Leo. Okay, Leo, let's see what is coming in for you, Leo. So Aquarius, as you know, is your opposite sign. So if you are Leo rising, a lot of this is happening in your seventh house. The new moon or the new seeds that are planted is happening in your house of relationships. So new things coming in for you or a partner, 
So or relationships in general, we have as your energy around this about setting some intentions, we have fire ant and oyster. Interesting. Fire ant is where this is a kind of an energy of social expectation, burnout even. You know, the ants have all got a little job to do and it's like I'm expected to be doing this, but there's something else that I that's calling me here. The oyster has, it, at the moment, it's almost like there's something you want to do, but it's best not to tell anybody around about it or to not say anything at this moment in time to the people that are going to go, if you tell them and immediately they're going to go, why are you going to do that and tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it? It's like you don't want this dream or this sense of this special thing, the oysters growing the pearl, there's something really beautiful here that you kind of, that is the seed that's growing. It's uh, deep inside your emotions here. And uh, it's almost like you, it hasn't, the oyster hasn't opened up yet. It hasn't opened up to reveal and show this thing and to show this beautiful gift or this beautiful thing to the world. Um, and it's almost like it doesn't want to be crushed at this moment, it doesn't want the dream to be crushed. So it's this sense of protection. It's kind of interesting because Aquarius kind of got a similar energy. If you've got any Aquarius in your chart, you might want to listen to that one as well. It was about protecting uh, something that you're feeling is going to be something special you want to bring into your world and and not telling the people that are not going to understand it um, so it really feels like you've potentially got a precious uh, feeling or a precious gift or a new feeling that's coming in here that almost needs to be kept secret um, or protected in some way shape or form it's going to be beautiful uh, with the oyster energy but yeah this is your special thing so it needs a little bit of protection so yeah it just is understanding what is this beautiful pearl that's here inside of you this is the seed that is coming out the intention that is coming out here for you and to honor that it's a real feeling because we've got the element of water here it's, it's you're going to feel it more so than anything uh, it might not necessarily feel like it's taken shape or form yet but it's like yeah, trust that feeling that's coming in or feelings for somebody <laughs> that's coming in. So yes, that's it. But it needs to be kept um, hidden or safe just for the moment uh, while it's before it's ready to open up and be shown to the world. So let's move on to Virgo. So Virgo, we have the otter. Beautiful. This is a very playful energy, the otter coming in. It's the otters on the lookout for some fun, for a companion, for somebody that kind of wants to join with your energy. Let's do this together kind of thing. So the otter is very, uh, you know, they're such cute little animals. They they snuggle together when they sleep. They they sleep hand in hand. And so it's, it's mostly the word I'm being given is companionship. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be, but it's kind of like I just want somebody to do something fun with so perhaps this is the seeds that you're you're setting this feels very inner child energy for me Virgo so it's kind of connect to something that brings you joy playfulness fun that brings you to a connection with somebody else or you're feeling really connected to something uh, but it has to come with the playfulness and joy so that's really important for those of you who are Virgo rising this new moon energy is happening in your fifth oh sorry your sixth house of work, daily routines and health. So this could be something quite simple as like you're looking for a tennis partner, you know, somebody who can do something regular or go for a walk for you, something healthy that you might want to do together. Um, let's do this together. Or, you know, if I'm going to do it, find an aspect that can make it fun. If there's a new health reach, seeds around your health, coming in a new health regime that you're wanting to set an intention for same for work and daily routines it wants to be light it wants to be fun it wants to be like you know enjoying the people around you so that's kind of the energy that's coming through with you with that virgo so let's pull a card for libra let's pull a card for libra okay cards for libra oh the tarantula came out. I want to pull another one. It felt like it wanted to go back in. So it's like, oh, this feels scary, but I just want to put that back. But it's like at the end of the day, it's almost impossible to avoid the tarantula. And that might be that Mars because it is a fire energy, the tarantula. We've got the Mars out of bounds energy where it's like 
you might be getting this motivation or drive to be pulled this way and to do something and immediately like you're like, oh, no, that doesn't quite feel safe or that just feels a little bit too outside of my comfort zone or it just seems too scary. So it's kind of interesting. I think this Mars energy is going to be because you know, Mars is in another air sign. It's going to be trining any of your Libra energies as well. So but um, ultimately we've got the elk here next to it. Ultimately, they're saying this is something that could transform your sense of status in the world. Like, like how you're seen. So the elk is very much to do with um, the divine masculine and, and status. Um, so, you know, we've all got the divine masculine, divine feminine, but it's like, yeah, potentially your outward ap appearance or how people see you in some way, shape or form, that's something that could really, um, you know, it could be related to your career, it could be related to your relationship status or it could be related, but there's an elevation that comes in here with this. You know, you're stepping up a notch, you're moving up a level in some way, shape or, or form. Maybe people are kind of looking up to you a little bit more or you're seen a bit more or that you kind of, you got that promotion or a little bit of success coming in or whatever whatever it is, but it's just this sense of it, it kind of getting you a little bit out of a comfort zone with the tarantula energy. It feels a little bit uh, potentially scary at first. But in terms of the new moon energy, this is all happening in your fifth house of joy. So your fifth house of joy, creativity, children, love, like romance. So not necessarily long-term relationships, but romance and sex as well, you know, like enjoyable, fun, pleasurable sex. So it really is a sense of that for those of you who are Libra rising, setting some seeds and some intentions for any of those themes that can come in that um, might be something that's feeling really, you're really feeling called towards at this moment in time. So beautiful. Okay, so let's pull some cards for Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio energy coming through. Scorpio. So if you are Scorpio rising, this energy is happening in your fourth house, which is your house of homes, root, home, roots, family, ancestry. So there's new seeds that are being planted here. So it might be really important to you to set a really strong intention. We have mouse coming out for all Scorpio. So mouse is really interesting because it's saying celebrate the small things. You know, this is, uh, they are small seeds that are coming up here. George piped in. You're the first a uh, sign that George has piped in, my rooster. So he's saying definitely celebrate the small things. Uh, from little things, big things grow. Absolutely. So it... <laughs> George is like, yes. So it really feels like uh, they might feel small and inconsequential for whatever reason, but it's important to let this... Uh, to just and notice the little things that are shifting and changing here. So it may be that you start off small, but it's ready to, it eventually could grow. So into something bigger with this little mouse. So yes, that is the message for Scorpio. I'll just see, yeah, interesting. Um, if there's anything else, yes, I'm hearing, like, I'm getting the mouse's ears. Um, so got quite big ears really for a small creature. So I get this sense of you're hearing things, uh, hearing things, learning things, information's coming to you. And so you might be, these little tidbits of information might be things that brings a smile to your face or you're celebrating that something, you know, you're hearing something that that makes you happy. Uh, maybe you hear of an opportunity. It might feel like it's something that um, you can celebrate the beginning of. But ultimately it's kind of saying whatever it is that you're hearing or learning at, through the grapevine, through people, through social media, whatever it is that you're hearing at this moment in time, it might feel like just one piece of information or a snippet or something like that, but it's a seed that's being planted. So just have an open and curious mind about um, some of these seeds that are being planted in your world at this moment in time. So that's it, Scorpio. That is your message. So let's look at Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. So if you are Sagittarius rising, this new moon energy is happening in your third house of communication, early education, 
community, siblings, uh, short distance travel. So there are new seeds that are being planted in those areas. For those of you who are Sagittarius rising, let's pull a card for Sagittarius in general. Hmm, interesting. There was a freeloader. This one freeloaded along the camel. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've got the dragon reversed. Okay, hidden. Something very hidden that came out. So we'll look at that in a second. But we have earthworm and phoenix. Fascinating. So the earthworm energy, and George is confirming a lot of this, the earthworm energy is the equivalent of the full card, which represents a new beginning. So it's very apt in terms of uh, the new moon energy, which is planting new seeds. But it's saying it's the earthworm might feel like something small and inconsequential. You know, it's not one of the most, not most amazing creatures on the earth, but yet it is because it tills the earth. It makes it um, a fertile, makes the earth fertile space to plant the seeds. So that's really important to be uh, creating a space within you or around you. Uh, it's a fertile time for these seeds to grow. These seeds are like the phoenix rising. It's something that can bring in a transformation into your world. So it may seem like, oh, you know, it's just a little earthworm. It's nothing that important, but really it's it's potentially going to turn into this phoenix. So, yeah, don't discount the little things. Don't be afraid to start small to create a sense of, okay, I've got a dream. Don't, don't be afraid to let yourself dream with this one, even if it's just about uh, creating the right space for the dream to occur, whether it's just your imagination or creativity or whatever it is that's coming in with this. Um, yeah, this, this is really a very, very potent energy. So what's hidden is the dragon reversed and the camel. So I kind of felt with the camels, kind of a bit of a freeload energy, like somebody might jump on board. It's like, you know, you're going, you're planting these seeds, um, um, bringing this transformation and someone just comes in and goes, oh, I'll do that too. I'll come along too. And you're like, I've actually been the one that's put in all the work and effort for this and you want to come on board. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you. But you might have, there might be a bit of a freeloader kind of energy, somebody that just kind of goes, yeah, I'll do that too. And so, yeah, just be aware of that. The dragon reversed. Um, this was the hidden energy and the dragon rep represents your soul, the, the strength and power of your soul energy, soul messages coming through. So I really feel like you're potentially going to get a lot of messages coming in at night time for you, whether it's quite literally at night, you're just sitting down and getting the messages all through your sleep and dreams. So this is a really important inward soul journey that you're going on with this. And that feels like that's connected to the fertile space. So it's kind of funny because it might feel like you're doing a lot of inner soul work and you're getting these sense of, you know, your soul, you're being called towards something, but it hasn't quite formed yet or it doesn't feel like quite the right time. Trust that. So anything that you can do that to just kind of, you know, before taking action to just work on that internal soul messaging, that soul work, that's what the, the earthworm is, is to create the space, uh, the fertile space. And eventually it will come out, up and out and be the phoenix rising. But again, it's that sense of just... Um, doing the inner work first and there might be, you know, a few months, the lunar cycles until the phoenix starts to rise and we start to see that. So um, just understand this is kind of like a longer energy that we might be seeing here. It's for you, Sagittarius. So <laughs> George is like, yes. Okay, so let's look at Capricorn, lucky last Capricorn. That is only because we started with Aquarius. Um, so let's see, Capricorn. Of course, we can't. We start off with the card of Aquarius Zebra. <laughs> so this Aquarius energy is happening in your second house. The new moon energy is happening in your second house of money if you're Capricorn rising. So these new seeds could be planted, could be to do with opportunities around money, around material possessions, around your self-worth and value. But it's just a sense of just sitting on something until it's ready to kind of grow. So it's, it requires a little bit of patience. I'm getting with that energy with the money. But I think that being Capricornian, 
you will be able to deal with that quite well, actually. I think it will suit you. So we have here the zebra. This is an Aquarius energy. Even though it's a fire, I always read it a fire sign with the upward pointing triangle. I always read it more as an Aquarius energy, which is an air sign, because it's very unique and original. You know, <laughs> George is agreeing, the rooster. Um, so, you know, every zebra has their own stripes, even though they're and still zebras, you know, no one zebra is the same and it's the same. So you kind of potentially uh, being coming face to face or a, a, that a, a vision is forming within your third eye here that is something that's very connected to your uniqueness, your unique gifts and abilities or something that is unique to you. So that's something that's coming through with that. Let's see. What else is coming out? We've got a bear and lizard. So I feel like this is more the, the hidden energy, the energy that is going to take a while to come out with this Capricorn. And we have the bear and the lizard. This is kind of almost similar to, a little bit similar to the Taurus energy. Um, so if you have any Taurus in your chart, another earth sign, you might want to check that out or you're cross-watching for a Taurus as well. But the bear is where something's been in a cave quite literally. So again, I get this sense of whatever this is, uh, that, that it's going to be a time delay between start planting the new seed and the bear emerging, something big emerges out of this. It may seem like a zany idea. It may seem kind of a little bit crazy or like, you know, uh, but it's a sense of when it finally does emerge up and out, it's something big. It's the bear, something very grounded. It comes out of its cave, out of the winter, out of hibernation, into the spring. It sees the sun. It sees things clearly. There's new growth. The landscape is shifting and changing. Things are coming in here and it sees the lizard ahead. And it, the lizard, this is the, the chameleon where it's like things can shift and change colour and shape. So it really is the sense that... Um, it, this thing could really change an aspect of your world or how you're seeing things or how, uh, yeah, just I just get this sense of ever-shifting landscape. Now, it may be that you're seeing somebody's true colours. It, that's something else that might come out of this Capricorn, uh, that you kind of I get the sense of you're coming out of this long slumber. There's a sleeper energy here. Something is these seeds have potentially been there for a long time and you're coming up and seeing something and going, Okay, what is what is this? What am I actually seeing here? Because the lizard can change its, it can morph, it can morph and change its color. It can be camouflaged. It can be disguised. You know, am I seeing this clearly? Am I seeing this person clearly? Who is this? What is this opportunity? I'm seeing all this growth, but there's something up ahead that's not necessarily that I need to spend a bit of time to work out exactly what this is or who this is. So give it a little bit. I just keep getting patience is going to be the key with this um, Capricorn. Patience is the key, but yes, there's yet there's this sense of wonder, like a wow. And perhaps there's a little bit of extra color comes back into your world for in a certain area of your world. But again, the patience to really understand what that means or what that looks like or you know what the true form of it is, is, is going to take a little bit of time. So, but ultimately it starts with, with you being the zebra and forming this little vision we're seeing here, the rainbow vision inside the third eye of the zebra. This is something unique to you that you are going to want to do and to honor that. So that's the seed that's being planted here. So yeah, interesting. That is your reading, Capricorn.